Hey guys, hope you're well and welcome to the first tutorial video which I've decided to do as a result of a poll on my Facebook page and Instagram. This one came out as a clear winner. This is my remix of Ben Golden Saivan Stay which was released on Armada last year. Polled at number 5 on the State of Trance Top 50. Uh, so thanks very much to you guys for voting that in. Uh, it's been an incredible track for me. Uh, Probably over the last year or so, year and a half since I since I started playing it out, picked up massive support from everyone, and yeah, it was an absolute pleasure to work on it. So I'm going to talk you through a bit of the production process and how how I went about approaching the project. Uh, so yeah, basically when I got the vocal for the first time and the original track, I just felt like you know it was a more uh, pop oriented original with a very stripped back melody. The chords were really nice, so I just wanted to beef up the melody with something more trancey, uh, with more of an arp. So that's the first thing that I did was work on creating some nice layers and a and a proper melody, uh, proper trance melody, should I say, for the for the original for the for my remix, and you know just getting the vocal cut up and sitting nice with everything and and finding finding the sounds that I wanted to work with. So that's the way I approached it f at first, and then uh, I think after that. I laid the track out and I think one of the major things about the track is that I didn't want to use too much of the vocal on the lead up uh, because I wanted the, the track to go through certain gears and when it reached the break, when that vocal just comes out of nowhere, it was just like, wow. So I wanted that to be the main uh, thing about the track, that the vocal wasn't overused. So at the very start, I just took a small snippets of the vocal and used some clever like delays and reverbs and just used it more as an atmosphere, uh, certain parts of it, and then when it comes into the break, you bang, you get the full vocal, and it's just a bit of a moment. So I just wanted to create that moment in the break, and then obviously there's a few more special moments which I created throughout the break, which I feel were uh, really essential to, to creating the whole vibe in the track. So we'll start. I'm going to talk you through starting off with the intro. I don't want to start off with the very intro of the track, because that's pretty boring stuff. We'll just get straight to the meat. Uh, so at the start of the track I usually start with a, a lower kick on a low cut uh, so when the main kick comes in uh, it's just going to be a bit more beefy so it's just like a couple of dB lower and a low cut kick and then I have like you know the, obviously the mid basses and some minimal percussion and then some effects and stuff uh, some vocal effects and whatever just building up to the main part when it drops in so I'll let you hear when it kicks in at the first uh, part where everything's going uh, with the bases and stuff and we'll start from there so this is what it sounds like So yeah, there you go. I have a lot of mid basses going here, actually more than I would usually use. I think there's there's ten in total, but I think a couple of those are duplicated, just for volume issues issues and uh, different sort of compression settings. So, uh, I would say there's about seven or eight in there all together. And yes, it is a bit excessive. I would usually three or four usually is enough for me. But this track, every track's different, and this one just this is the way it is. Some of these mid basses. If I took them out, people would probably not hear them, but I would, and I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to making music, so, you know, I couldn't sleep at night if I left them out and I thought it needed to be in there. So, yeah, let's go through those first and see what way the layers are made up. I mean, each one is doing a different thing, obviously, in the frequency range, and they're all EQ'd different and different sounds. Some of them are the, actually the same sound, but just EQ'd different to get, give the, the sound a bit more body. So, yeah, let's start with the first one. Uh, that's just a standard uh, silent patch from a preset bank that's uh, I, I actually think it's an arc maybe uh, no it's just like it's just notes with the, the velocity of the notes chains to give it that more rolling uh, effect and you know there's no, I don't even think there's no external rever or reverbs or delays on that I think it's just all within the synth so that's the first one uh, then we have ES2, which I use a lot. I would say like 80% of the sounds that I use in my tracks come from the ES2. So it's more like a jumpy stutter sort of bass. 
again with no, uh, some velocity work on the notes just giving it that jumpy stabby uh, effect and I have some bus some buses on here which are just like bass delays which I have set up and an arc delay and obviously some compression on there too uh, you know those two together you can hear those two so it's creating a wee bit of a bounce to an already rolling bass line, a wee bit more of a groove, very slight. So we'll move on to the third one, which is uh, another ES2. And it's, some, it's another jump bass. I think it has less, it, uh, sorry, it has a different type of delay on it. There's actually an own voice delay on it. So if you put those together with the one that's similar above, it's just giving it a wee bit more of a texture and like, uh, it's just a nice wee groove. It just adds something like, wee bit of a phase going on there too, which I like sometimes. It works really well on the on the bass lines. Sometimes phase is good. It is obviously a bad thing most of the time, but cancel it out. Sometimes I just leave it in because it just adds a nice uh, texture to the overall bass. So on to bass line number three, which is another ES2. So on to bass line number four, which is another silent. And it's a more, I think it's actually the same one as bass line one, but it's a more, yeah, it's the same bass line. It's just different EQ settings. So it's a bit more, you know, on the high end of things. Loads of low taken off there. And it's just playing like you'll hear when I put the two of them together. It's just, you know, it's more, playing a more high, higher up the frequency range sort of role so it creates an overall body of the of the two so this is the four of them together it's just creating a fuller more fuller mix on the overall on, the, on all the bass lines and obviously on those I'll have you know my own delay settings and arp settings which are you know I'll let you hear without those what they're adding to it uh, I'll let you hear Bass line 4 also has a sample delay on it, which gives it a wee bit. Actually, I hadn't even turned on, I thought I had. Usually, I have used that for a bit more width, but it must have been, there must have been enough width on it, and I've just turned it off. Usually, I do that or that and give it a wee bit more stereo, but I think within the synth it had enough stereo on, so I've just maybe tried that and forgot to delete it. But I usually do use that on most of my bass lines and sometimes on some element of percussion as well. So yeah, uh, let me see. We are on to number five. Uh, that's actually just in the break. That must be a different volume and EQ setting. So we'll go on to six, which is one here. Which is a really low sort of growling bass, almost like, like a really bitty grainy sort of sound. Uh, and that's again it's adding a nice texture to the overall sound that's an ES2 preset uh, and you know yeah that's adding something to it as well a nice texture so we're going to play those all together those five you know when I take that out I can hear that wee gritty bottom and texture that is odd, and I can hear that missing. So on to this one, which is another ES2. And it's a more full bodied mid sort of bass. Uh, that's actually a pluck that I'm using for that sound. So yeah, that one along with this. Bass line starting to fill up now. And then we have this one, number eight. Another ES2. Again, it's adding a different texture. I don't even think that's a bass. I think it's a pluck as well. Yeah, it's a pluck. So, you know, they're all adding different textures to, uh, in the frequency range. So if you're playing them all together, you're going to hear like... Five 
if I start deleting stuff, you'll hear them go dropping out. You know, they all have their place. Uh, then onto this one, which is another layer of this, which adds that nice wee piece of phasing that I like. Uh, you know, that's done on purpose. Creates like there is a there is a phasing option on the ES2, uh, which let me see if I can get it. What's this one? Sorry. This one, which sounds really nice, but sometimes you get a more unique thing with actual phasing is what I've done here it's just creating that uh, now we're on to this one this is zebra really clicky bass uh, this one is very very plucky very stabby sort of bass so you can hear this with them all together Together, and then we have a standard sub it's just from silent with some compression on it uh, so this is everything together Yeah, so that's it. That's all the mid bases really in the track. Uh, as far as like instruments are concerned, we'll get to those later. As far as the pads and all that, all that stuff. But so yeah, let's get to the acids. I've I've bounced these out from the Varus TI. I've added some uh, reverb and some uh, arc delay to that, and I've also widened it slightly and some tremolo to give it like a bounce from speaker to speaker. So if you hear that going. just creating the atmosphere on the first drop when they come in I took out the percussion I just left the ride symbols in on that first part but I think they're actually low in volume and rising up let me just check that yeah the gains down pretty low when those drop in to give that impact and then they sort of creep up so you're getting this sort of so you can hear <laughs> comes in all golden's blazing here on the second part so we we'll have just standard perk loops here uh, nothing fancy with these it's just like a sort of you know shaker tackle sort of loop there as well and nothing really fancy and, and the clap also I layered the clap up so we have a more clicky sort of clap as well as a full bodied one giving it more of an attack so that is given that like again just some reverb on there uh, and again plug in to control the volume nothing really fancy on that so yeah that's when it kicks in you have strip back section uh, also, I don't know if this one's coming in lower as well. Yeah, it's coming in slightly lower on the, the gain just to create that impact and then rises up. And then on down here, we obviously have just the effects section, which is just, you know, your white noises and crashes and stuff, just generic stuff. So, yeah, that's that. Then we build bringing everything in gradually, bringing in the percussion, uh, and we introduce another acid line, which is sort of bouncing off each other. I think these two are from Silent. Yeah, a lot of processing on these actually. We have like the own boys delay, some overdrive, reverb, and they're doing this, they're sort of like bouncing off each other.
Again, you know, we'll have some cutoff work on those, on both those, just creating that nice resonant sort of uh, effect. The, actually, the top one just has, I think, the, bo the bottom one's flat, so it's that's what's the alternating effect. So. And we we'll have the lovely Umboy's delay, which creates that nice spiraling sort of delay you'll hear when I take it off. That's with it. And this is without it. And the bottom one's playing, sorry, just that. That's with it. Absolutely love that delay, creates such a nice, unique, swirling sort of delay effect. So I use that a lot. Uh, yeah, so that comes in. Then we have some plucks coming in. Uh, these are, let me just, these. Just ES2 plucks. And, you know, a lot of processing on them, reverb, stereo delay. Uh, we also have uh, some, let me see what else we have here. Arp Delay Bus, which I've set up. I have my own buses all set up with my own plugins, lots of channel strips there. So, you know, that's, that's sort of creeping in and playing a nice atmosphere part of the track. start introducing the vocal so what I've done is I have chopped the vocal up and I found this part of the vocal line which I absolutely loved uh, alive, 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 alive. so what I done was I bounced it out with the delay on it and then I cut it up and made the delay more uh, sort of like in sync and uh, just more consistent and then I, I rebounced it out again and that's what's created that and I just controlled uh, the volume of it with the gain plug-in on the channel strip so I think I introduced it with this wee vocal coming in first so it's just not dropping in let me just check that yeah so I sort of made my own wee line up so it's saying a better feel and then alive and then the delay so that's what I rolled with for the start for the intro i didn't want to give too much of the vocal away so it's more a signal of intent with that just coming in uh and you can hear the effect it has when that drops in there's loads of reverb on it obviously and like push, pulled back in the mix <laughs> More plucks come in as well here. It's like Paul Van Dyke sort of plucks, I call them. I labeled them that. They sound like his sort of vibe, so. Those are plucks that I made myself in uh, Albino 3. Great wee synth. And yeah. Those are playing lots of reverb on them. I actually had an Echo Boy on them, but for some reason, it's not working. Uh, when I when I upgraded my OS X, it wouldn't work. And you know, I've contacted them more times, and they just won't reply. So it doesn't work anymore for me. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, that was used to give it a bit more nice, you know, a nice sort of delay after the last note. I think it was automated, but you know. That was in the original project, so uh, you probably won't hear it anyway. But anyway, that's those come in, and along with the vocal and the two pluck lines and the acid, 
they create like a, a nice wee groove. So we'll play everything together. <laughs> So to create a bit of tension here, I low cut the whole track and then I drop into a key change. I needed to create some sort of a moment at that point uh, because I wasn't using the full vocal line. I needed to uh, take the track through the gears and I thought like a nice uh, quick key change would work really well there. So that's what I did. I key changed everything, the, the acids and the bass lines sort of key changed and then quickly go back to the original notes. And yeah, uh, I low cut it just before it drops in, it sounds really well, so the, the low cut on the master, and it'll go like that. Let's see. We'll play it back from here. So when the key change drops in, I didn't want to repeat the same pluck sequence. I wanted to add some more uh, interesting sort of wee, wee background bells sort of plucks, I call them. So I have those in here. And I think it's these ones. So yeah, I, I done a pattern and then I started deleting some notes, whatever ones I felt weren't working, just muted those. And that goes really well with, uh, with these plucks and the... Uh, ones on top so you're getting this sort of sequence so it's just creating an, an overall atmosphere and give it, giving it some nice uh, balearic sort of vibes and you know I, th I thought it added something really nice to the, the key change part uh, along with the vocals so it sounds like that <laughs> So now we're bridging into the break. I wanted to create like a nice kick roll, have everything building, and the thing for me was that it had to drop down to absolute nothing here. Slight delay on the vocal, and the Rhodes piano, which I added in, had to come in, and it comes in here in the break. I'll solo that. And that had to be a defining moment in the track. So everything builds up, it's all very busy and then it just drops down to near enough complete silence with that moment with the Rhodes piano, which was like another moment in the track, which I think is really important. So it drops into that. And that's just uh, Logic's own built-in plugins it's just you know a standard Rhodes piano really cool piano I've never actually used an instrument like that in the track before and you know it's actually spurred me on to try using sort of more organic stuff in in my productions going forward and the next couple of tracks I've been making I've been using a lot more of those instruments and it turned out really well uh, you know you can get stuck in a pattern using the same saws and stuff like that and sometimes it's good to try different things so this gave me an opportunity to, to do that so I'll let you hear when it builds up and it just drops in. I think there's a pad in there playing something low. No, the pad doesn't come in the later. It's just basically that piano and a bit of a delay on the vocal. And that's the only thing that happens at the start of the break. And some impact stuff, let me see. <laughs> So 
So for me, that was like, that's a, a real moment in the track, just with that piano on its own, no pads, no, uh, you know, drone pad or anything, just a Rhodes piano and nothing else, a bit of delay. So it created that moment. Then when the actual vocal kicks in itself, I introduce uh, just the vocal and the Rhodes piano and don't bring the pads in until the second section of the vocal. So it's adding those layers and gears again to the break. So you have that. Just something worth mentioning here. I always bounce out my delays because sometimes they can have like a weird behavioral pat pattern. If anybody uses logic, they can have a mind of their own sometimes and just go into one and loop on themselves. Even though the feedback is turned like down enough, it just, it's just how it is. So it's just practice that I've learned over the years. Uh, I always just bounce out my delays, which, you know, that's the vocal. And then I'll just use a gain on it, you know, to bring it down. That's how I like to work on logic. It's just too temperamental. It's, it can be very flaky with stuff like that. And it keeps it, the track very consistent also, and you know the delay is right and it's done, and that's it, you can move on. So, yeah, let's see the break. <laughs> So the vocal itself, there's actually very, very little processing on the vocal. I mean, when I got the vocal, I was completely blown away by how good it was. Uh, I've just added a delay from Waves to give it a wee bit of uh, more atmosphere. I'd like to hear that. Uh. You cannot see the light. Hold on for now, I'll mute that so you can hear without it. You No one come And that's without there was a wee bit of EQ on it, uh very slight. Just some wee some wee bits were cutting through in the mix. Probably due to me something that I should mention also is that when I'm making my tracks I have my mastering chain on. Uh because I like to get the overall vibe of the track. And it means that when I finish the track, uh it's basically mastered itself. Although this track I did get stem mastered externally because it was a big track. Uh I usually do most of my own stuff in in the project so that when it does come to the end, you've just to maybe add a wee bit of a high or a low, or take a wee bit of low off or just very small tweaks to the track. So that's why I have my own mastering chain on while I work. Uh, it's just how it's just how I work. Everybody works different, and that's how I like to I like to be in the complete vibe of the track and get the whole f feel of the track so that when it's finished, it feels like a complete track. And you're not relying on something to make it into something that it's not going to be. Uh, so yeah, just to, I just to, just around the mids, you know, I just took a wee bit of EQ in there just to. You cannot see the light. Hold on for dear life. Just to tam, uh, just to sorry, tame a bit of those transients there. So basically, w without anything on it, that's what it sounds like. Uh, you cannot see the light Hold on for dear life No one comes tonight The vocal is incredible. There wasn't one pitch issue in the whole vocal. It's an absolute masterclass. Uh, and, you know, I've just added a slight delay. This is the delay without the reverb. You cannot see the light Hold on for dear life you know, it's just giving it a bit of space, uh, some dynamics, and then I've added my own uh, reverb to that, and it just gives it that nice. You cannot see the light. Hold on for life. So that's uh, that's all the processing went that went into the vocal. Very very little, considering some of the tracks that I've worked on, I, it was very very minimal. Uh, 
and I've just used the original cards that uh, Ben had sent from his original for the Rhodes piano. So that was the original cards. Uh, I've just used those. And let me just see. So you have to forgive me because I've just moved to Logic X at the start of the year and I'm still fine with my feet with it from Logic 9. And it's, it's yeah, it's annoying to say the least. Anyway, uh, we have, then we introduce some pads. I think we introduce a uh, trance, yeah, just a drone. So it's just a the bass notes of the pad playing just an atmosphere, like a, a, a real bass bottom note. And then I have the pads in there playing. These are very, very sort of uh, not the not the typical pads that I would sort of use for a track. They're very uh, I don't know how to say it. The only way I can say it is very furry, but you know they're very like uh, dramatic, like sort of pads, if you like, and you know. They're from this plugin from from June, and you know I I tend to use more saw based stuff, but I felt like this track needed that that musicality and that more at, that atmospheric touch in the break. So I've stuck those in there, and I have also uh, another pad which comes in. So we have a drone and a pad that comes in, then another pad that comes in that adds another texture. And then also I have some plucks playing in the background, giving it a nice wee atmosphere. Uh, they're just, it's just actually a piano. I'll let you hear that soloed uh, with some reverb on it. And again, that's just Logic. Logic stock uh, plugins. There's a stereo delay on that. That's without it. You know, it's very dry and sort of like. Then I'll add some nice reverb and stereo delay. And then we have the Rhodes piano playing. I think it actually goes down in volume and the other one creeps up, if I remember rightly. No, it's actually playing straight the way through. So it continues on and the piano comes in. Now this pad comes in, this is from Massive, and this is uh, a more fuller pad, and it's sort of... Uh, Again, creates levels in the break, so you have things creeping in, different subtle elements, and then uh, it comes in on top of, I think it just complements this other pad very well. So when you hear the both of them coming in. So play everything together from when the vocal comes in. You barely feel alive You fall into your knees You cry but no one sees Please listen to me Where you are I have been Well, all that you want Is to make it through the day Well, all that you want Seems oh so far So at this point in the track, uh, I wanted the melody, melody to come in. I didn't want to play the melody with the vocal because it felt like they were clashing a lot. Uh, one was very good on its own and the other was very good on its own. It was just the way it, it, it was with the vocal. So I decided to bring the vocal or in on its own with the nice pads and the piano. And then after that, 
I was going to drop in the melody, but I just didn't want to bring it in with the cutoff filter down and smack it in. I thought it was just too safe and, you know, predictable. So I decided to use a different instrument and I came across this uh, sound, which is like, the only way I can describe it is like a church organ. <coughs> and what I've done is I've put the attack up on the synth to create this sort of effect. So this is how that this is how it sounds on its own when it drops in. But this is how it did sound before I added some uh, tweaks. So the attack was down. Oops, sorry, some automation. I'll have to put the automation down. Just check here, it would be that. And that. So you can hear it's just more of like a generic sort of high end bell sort of pluck sort of sound. So I wanted to create that swirling uh, vibe. So I, I put the attack up, it's actually automated. So the attack goes up on the synth, which is these. So it goes up and it's just on the fil fil filter envelope and on the amplitude envelope. I've just increased the attack to create that create that swirling. So I put that up as well. And this is the bit, this is the sound I got then. And I feel like this is another big defining moment in the track because it's a sort of sound that comes out of nowhere that you're not expecting on the overall track, but yet it fits so well. And you know, it's one of my favourite sounds in the whole track, to be honest. I absolutely love it. So this is where, the way it sounds all together when everything comes in. And then we bring in the main leads. The main leads are from Zebra and June. Uh, two layers. You know, we're just bringing in two nice layers there. One's more low end and the low end, the other one's more on the high end, just complement each other really, really well. So those two come in. Obviously we have the, the cutoffs filtering up on each. Just some cutoff work there, automation, just creating the atmosphere. And then we have the trance drone playing there as well. Uh, so that builds main lead it's just an arp melody which I wrote uh, the melody itself is pretty simple but it works really really well I feel with the overall track it's not like a, I think it's more about the sense that's used as opposed to the complexity of the melody so everything comes in here <laughs> I think it's important to note at this part that the melody it doesn't play the same melody like repeated after each bar it like changes lots throughout the whole track uh, 
different sort of harmonies and stuff so I'll just play it on its own just at this point and you can hear that even this part is like two separate melodies And then we go into, I think the third section is actually different as well. Let me just check that. Yeah, it's slightly different as well. So the full three bars there of the melody, three sections of the melody are playing different chords. Uh, just to create that tension on the build, I think it drops down. I think there's a nice wee harmony through in there as well, just at this point. Uh, yeah, <coughs> this wee harmony comes in, so it's... So that's playing a... You'll hear that building up with the harmony dropping in. Have an acid line there building up the tension in the break. And the whole track will be low cutting as well, so you get the low cut. Obviously some nice vocal delays in there as well, building up. I didn't want to use the full vocal line. So I have uh, added in there some vocal chops. I'll let you hear those. Well, all that you want is to make it through the day. Oh, so far away. Just delaying out. that some of the sub basses uh, what I've done is they're on different channels and the reason for that is that when it, whenever it hits the key changes sometimes the sub completely loses uh, if it goes too low in a note it completely loses the bottom end so what I do is I copy the sub to a new channel so it doesn't disrupt the, the sub that I already have in on the intro and I'll EQ it different so that when the, the key changes come in uh, I can EQ them different so it fits in the mix. I'll show you what I mean. So if I play this, for example, this one's playing these notes, and then the next channel, let me just see that, is playing that, those, and then the next channel is playing the first half of the notes. It's just that the, each channel is EQ'd completely different, so you get probably a different volume level as well, I would say. Let me see. Yeah, slightly. There's a couple of dB in it, just to give you that.
you know, and those those will have been EQ different. Uh, you know, just very slightly, but again, you know, it does make a difference when you're trying to get that nice rounded mix uh, and everything sitting perfect. So that's the way I go about that. And the mid basses probably would have been the same. I don't think I used as many on the drop because I wanted the melody. I didn't want them to clash with the melody, so I used the, the ones that were cutting through in the mix a lot more on the drop. And the drop is more percussion based. I think I raised the volume and some of the percussion. Uh, yeah, the percussion's poked up a wee bit. You know, a couple of dB there in places, and it's just to poke through in the mix and make it more driven there, so we we'll have this effect. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that, and we have in there also the melody loops. It plays the melody looped until this point, and then drops into a new melody, which hasn't been heard before in that part. I'll let you hear. We have the melody playing there, and again, it, each section is completely different than the one before. Note wise, uh, I think these these three here are the same, and then it drops into completely different key changes here. Just all those wee things given, like uh, you know, something different to the track, and then we bring in some vocals but again not the full vocal yet it's still the delays the words with the delays alive, alive. then you know you barely feel So at this point I wanted to add an extra element, a nice pluck, and I brought in some pads. Uh, that's really weird sounding pads, I'm not sure what way to describe them, but this they sound really, really cool. Uh, let me see. Again, playing different notes in different sequences, just really quickly, just to add atmosphere. You can sort of hear them in the background when the main lead's going. In comes the nice plucks which I have. Again from the ES2, uh, lots of reverb on them and also really pushed on the EQ to cut through in the mix. Uh, actually took some highs off that and it's been just EQ'd to, to sit in the mix properly. And yeah, those plucks are really cool, really trancy, and everything together. So that's it, pretty standard outro. We go into some nice delays, build, uh, and then into the outro. 
at this part here I've just bounced out a section of the track with a filter on it so it's the full export without percussion I think. Yeah it's just a bounce of the track without any percussion with a filter on it so you can hear that building up before it drops and it's just a wee trick I like to use. Uh. <laughs> Everything low cotton again, probably, yeah. It's Logic's low cuts sometimes. They don't kick in on the bar. Nightmare. I don't know why that's uh, doing that. Anyway. Yeah, so it's a pretty standard outro. We just go into some acid uh, and some more plucks and stuff we'll talk through here. And we'll see what where the outro goes. And yeah, that's it. I mean, as, as far as a track's concerned, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, there's 100 plus channels on there, but which is some of the stuff's duplicated a lot so uh, you know there's a lot of vocal channels in there we're doing wee bits and pieces delays and whatever so if you take all those out i would say you'd be down to about maybe 70 80 channels which isn't too bad and uh yeah uh, let me see we drop into here we introduce the acid again and stuff so <laughs> So again, it's just taking elements from the intro and putting them into the outro, some vocal effects and stuff. And yeah, that's basically it. You know, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Hope we give you a bit of an insight into my production process, how I do things, how the track was made. And of course, you know, I'm open to questions. Uh, so drop any questions in the comments below on YouTube or on Facebook. And I'll try my best to answer them if you have any questions about the track. And yeah, as far as music's concerned, I'm working on lots of new stuff at the moment. And I'm going to have, uh, I would say, put it this way, an abundance of new material coming later this year. I'm working on some new vocal tracks and some new originals. So yeah, hope you guys are well and staying safe and I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. And again, if you want any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. And I'm hoping to see you all very soon on the dance floor and get to spin this track again. So yeah, see you all very soon guys. Stay safe.